Okay, Island Mapping Crew. If you want to know how to set your unit up or how to get your chip running, this is the video for you. And that's why we're doing this right now. I'm going to give two different versions of it. I'm going to give like the 60 second version and then the longer, more drawn out version for those that uh, need a little bit more direction. But for those that are reasonably familiar with the machines, it's very simple. I'm going to go through it really quick. When you order one, you get one of these chips. It looks like this. You take the microchip out, put it in your unit, and it's pretty much plug and play. There's just a couple things that you need to know how to do, and those things are as follows. Once it boots up in there, it's going to ask you if you want to boot the chip. You hit yes. The map's going to come up. It's not going to have any pictures on, most likely. Go into the chart options and turn the photos to full. Check your shaded relief settings in the chart options and make sure shaded relief is checked on. And the only other thing you need to do is go into the main settings for the unit and make sure your WAS is turned on, W-A-A-S. Not that it's absolutely necessary, but for this product, because it's uh, very accurate, you want to make sure your WAS is turned on. A lot of people never turn it on for some reason, so make sure yours is on. If you do those things and hit go, map is going to come on, you're going to be in business. So that's uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, and you don't need any watch anymore. For those of you that uh, are unfamiliar with the machines and not particularly tech savvy and what have you, I'm going to walk through the steps step by step. We're going to go through how to change the map layers and exactly what to do from beginning to end uh, and everything that you need to know. So when you order the machine or when you order the, 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 the machine and the map, whatever you order and you get one, uh, you're going to get an email and it's going to have some instructions to download. And if you download it, it's going to be a few pages like this. It's going to have some directions on it, step-by-step -step directions. And you'll want to print it and you'll want to read it. And that's what I'm going to go through. And I'm going to have the machine in front of me here in a minute. And we're going to go through it one by one if you can follow along in the video. Before I do that, uh, a couple things. Um, the, uh, the opening uh, page on this goes through the, the things that are most important. And then it also has... A little blurb about the theft and loss policy, which I think is important to mention here because more and more of this stuff has been happening. Every week someone calls and says their chip got stolen or it got lost. And for whatever reason, they expect that it's going to be replaced for free. I don't know why, but that's what people think. And that is not the policy here. So if you lose your chip or if you get your chip stolen, we don't treat it any different than Garmin, or anything else. If you lost a Garmin chip and called up Garmin, they're not going to give you a free one and we don't give you a free one either. You got to protect it and take care of it and make sure you're tracking where it's at. Um, these little chips are become very popular and they're valued targets for theft. If you leave it unattended in your unit in a boat yard and when you stow your boat, it has a high probability someone's going to be walking around looking in these machines for these chips and it could get stolen. If you leave it unattended at a boat ramp and walk away to get your car after someone saw it on your boat, it has a high likelihood of getting stolen. It happens every week. Um, it just does. I've heard everything from all those stories to it got dropped in the bilge, it got vacuumed, it, and everything in between. Uh, people have lost them over and over again. And if you lose it, you're going to have to buy another one. So please take care of it and keep track of it. Enough said about that. Let's get to it. Um, I'm going to uh, put the camera in front of the uh, machine and we're going to go through these instructions step by step like, like you just got it at your house. You don't need to have any other chips. It's a standalone product. People ask me, well, do I need to run it with uh, another product? And I'm like, no, this was designed to replace all the other products, which you're not happy with. That's why you got this thing, because you're not happy with the other chips that you have been running. And why would you want to run the other ones uh, at the same time? It's, it's been designed to replace the other ones because they're so poor. So why the whole thing was built in the first place. So it's a standalone product, but it's not to say that you can't run it side by side with another map if you'd like. You can. You can run them at the same time and look at them side by side on the same machine even. Um, but it's not necessary. So uh, most people who buy it just buy it as and they run it as a standalone product. 
Um, all right, so let's pretend that you just got it in the mail and we're gonna set the machine up and put the chip in and all of that kind of stuff. I'm gonna walk through the instructions so that if, if you need some direction in that, you can just watch the video and follow right along with what I'm doing. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm in front of the unit and uh, this is the main screen with all the main icons on it. First time you turn your unit on, if it's brand new, you'll probably end up with a map or something. Look like that, but more than likely, the first time you turn it on, you might find yourself someplace down there like that. You won't know what's going on. You're going to need to take your knob or your button and zoom out. If you just got it out of the box and try to get back over here towards Florida to get oriented properly. But eventually you're going to uh, hit the main menu key up here, probably up over here this way on your machine. You're going to get back to the main menu to, to start the process. So before you do anything, uh, you don't want to have any chips in your unit at all. You want it to be completely chipless and just uh, turned on. The map that you're going to see or that you originally saw is going to be the chart that comes in the unit. It has nothing to do with any mapping chips. In the units, you have uh, one or two base maps that come in there loaded depending on which minute machine you got, but they're basically glorified cartoons and uh, they're not particularly useful. So before we get going with the map chip, uh, you need to probably back up your chip and uh, I'm going to follow along with the instructions. So the very first thing to do, uh, number one on the instructions, is back up your map chip. In order to do that, take the chip, put it in the adapter that was provided. The microchip goes in the adapter, the adapter goes in your computer. Uh, navigate to the directory on your USB on your computer and copy all of the files on the chip to a directory that you make on your computer. Call it whatever you want. It's 32 gigabytes of information, or pretty close to that. Copy all the files, every single file on the chip to your computer and back it up and just leave the files in there. That way, if anything happens to your chip, you can take the files that were in your backup uh, directory and erase your chip and copy all of the files from your computer back to the chip and it will fix whatever problem that you may have. Now, a lot of people take these chips and they save sonar data to them and they use the chips to update their computers. They update their software and their machine with the chips, the mapping chips, and uh, it messes them up. So never use your chip to save sonar data. Never use your chip to save any, any other data. Uh, that's why you have two, two, two slots on your machine. If you want to save data to your machine, use a different chip to save the data onto. If you're recording sonar data or any other kind of data that you want to save and if you're using a chip to update your software in the machine um, and downloading the file from the computer uh, the, the, the soft uh, Lorant site or the Simrad site to update your software use a different chip to do that do not use the mapping chip all right so after you backed up your chip uh, uh, the next thing to do is if you have an older machine and this is not brand new you want to update the software in the machine if you have like an old Lorantz Gen 1 or Gen 2 or what have you, uh, there's a chance that the chip may not work because the software is too old. Go through the procedure to update the software in your machine before you do any of this stuff with the directions that were provided to you. Update the software, otherwise going through all these procedures we're going to get going through in a minute may not actually work at all because you don't have, you've got an old version of the software. In order to update the software, the new machines, you can do it through a wireless function. You can read about how to do that in your own manual. Uh, it does it through Wi-Fi and automatically updates your software. I don't like to do that because I want it to update only when I want it to and I want to know what it's doing. Sometimes I don't want to do the updates. I don't want it doing anything automatically. So I sort of deactivate my Wi-Fi on my new machine. If you have an older machine that doesn't have that function, the only way to do it is to actually use a little chip and you go to the uh, website for Lorance or Simrad and you find your unit in the so software support and you download this file it's called a .upd file to that chip. You only need a little tiny chip uh, maybe a one gigabyte chip you can buy it in any store 
put it into your computer, download the file, get the file onto the chip. It's just going to be a little tiny one file. All you do to update your software in the machine is take the chip after you have the .upd file on there, turn your machine completely off to it's totally off, take the chip, put it uh, down here in the slot, and once it's in the slot down here, close the door, turn on the machine, it will automatically read the .upd file on the chip, it will automatically update your software on your machine, it'll go through it, do it automatically, it'll take about two minutes and it'll be all done and then you'll be ready to go. As soon as it's updated, take that chip out and then you're on to the next step. So you won't have any chips in the units. So the first step, now that your software is updated and your chip is backed up, is to turn on the units, turn on the unit and get to one of the screens. Maybe you'll get to this screen or maybe you'll get to this screen. Okay, so we're gonna start from this screen and we're gonna go right down the list. I'm on number four on the instructions. Number four, mm -hmm. step number four. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna go into the main settings in the machine. Now on the Lowrance machines, it's gonna be the same, very similar setup to the Simrad machines and the BNG is gonna be almost exactly the same as the Simrad in terms of these steps. The, the software is organized very similarly but it's not always exact depending on your particular unit. So uh, it's not gonna be 100% exactly the same depending on what version of the software that you're running, but it'll be very close to what we're gonna do. And if it's not exact on your machine, just pay attention to the titles and the words that we're looking for, and then you can find those particular things in your machine to click on. So in order to get into the main settings, you have a cog up here on this corner and a X over here on this corner. And we're going to click the little cog over here and you're going to get a, a screen that says all these things and it's already going to be defaulted to system and we're going to go right down the list here of all the different things um, in the system and the first one is the language so change your language to english if you want to see english language this next one is boat settings click on boat settings and it gives you this I never mess with this I don't even know what it is but I guess you can put in your statistics of your boat if you want and doesn't do anything the next thing is text size you can change the size of the words here to large small or normal that's large that's small I just keep it sort of to normal like that the next thing is key beeps I have it off right now but if I can put it to loud and every time I click on something, uh, it's going to beep at me like that. I don't like the beeps, so I turn mine off completely. The next thing is time. If you click on time, you can change the time in the machine. And right now, it's about uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. And, well, actually, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. And uh, it says on my screen right up here that it's only about 2.30 in the afternoon, which means that I got the wrong time showing, and that's probably going to happen to you too. So if you want the correct time to show on your screen, you have to go in here to the time and click on that and adjust the local time offset. So right now it's 0500 Greenwich Mean Time. You can also change the time format to 24 hour or 12 hour or in the change the month and date format that you want. This is fine and this is fine for me and I need to make sure that my time is correct so right now I'm one hour off from actual time and I need to get it to the correct time so um, I'm not sure if, what direction I need to go but I'm one hour off and it's 0500 so I'm gonna change it to a 06 and see if I get the correct time on my screen so it changed it from 230 to 130 which means it was not the right time so I'm gonna go back here and go from a 6 to a 4 
and then save that. And now it says the correct time. So my local time now is correct and for my current location. And if you you need to do that too, depending on where you're at to get the right time to display at the top of your screen. So that's that. This next thing is the configure the wheel key. And um, you can mess with this dial over here. There's a there's a, a dial over here that you can mess with for shortcuts if you want to configure your wheel key for shortcuts and things like that. No problem. Just um, click on this uh, wheel key and uh, you can go through the procedures to set some shortcuts up if you like. Okay, next thing is very important. It's called satellites. And this is one of the most important things that you need to do in terms of setting this unit up. You click on this word satellites and you'll see this screen here and it'll show you the satellites that you're locked onto. Right now I don't, I'm in the house so I don't really have a good lots of satellites going on but that's okay. The more important thing that you need to worry about here is this word called configure and make sure that your GPS source says this device. Okay, so you want it to read your GPS source on this machine and that's that's okay. That's It says this device on it. So you want to hit configure down here. And then you're going to see this. And if, this, if you've never done this before, it's going to look just like this. You need to check this box up here called enable WAS. If you've never done this before, it's not going to be checked. It's going to ask you if you want to enable it. You click yes. Once it's checked, it's checked, and you don't have to worry about this again. X out of that, and your wash will be turned on. If you want to make sure it's checked on, you can click back on there and see it's checked. What that does is make your machine accurate. It makes the GPS much more accurate than it would be if it was not turned on. And that's important with this chip. I've been on a lot of boats, even with experienced captains that have never turned the wash on and didn't, want even about, didn't even know anything about it or thought it was on and it wasn't on and that's the reason why their machine wasn't so accurate and maybe they were wondering why it wasn't quite as accurate as they thought it should be. Maybe they couldn't find a wreck one day. It's probably because they thought they were at a certain place and they really weren't. But because they didn't have their WAS turned on. So I'm going to X out of that now that the WAS is turned on. The next thing is um, a pin code. You can set a pin for your machine if you want. You don't have to, no problem. This next thing is, I don't have, I don't set one up, so I just leave it alone. The next one is restore defaults. If you click on that, if you ever need to reset something in your machine, you go into this thing and it will allow you to reset these things back to factory. We're not gonna do that right now, but that's where it is. So you can skip over the restore defaults. The next thing is the power control. If you have two machines on your boat, one of them is going to be the main machine and one of them is going to be sort of the following machine. They call it Slave and Master. This one is the only machine I have. So it's the main machine and I have Master checked and that's the way yours should be if you have one. If you have two and you're setting up your main machine, you know, you need to check these things as appropriate. Follow the instructions. I'm not an expert in... Uh, networking the machines, but this is part of that process if you have to go through that. Most people, in fact almost everybody with very few exceptions, have only one machine on their boat. They never worry about that. The next thing is advanced. Click on advanced. And then you're going to get this screen and it's going to have all these different things. We're going to go right down the list. The first thing is waypoints. Click on waypoints and check this box. Are you probably ought to check this box controls whether it can have a waypoint can have the same name if it if you don't check it you cannot have the same name for each of your waypoints and most of the time that's a problem for people so for instance if you had 25 redfish spots that you wanted to mark and you wanted to make an icon with a fish and call them all redfish you could do that if you check that box if you did not check that box you'd have to have redfish 1 redfish 2 all the way to redfish 25 in terms of what you call the specific waypoints. So I think it's handy to have that checked. The next thing is hardware. This is to touch your, to calibrate your touch screen. 
Mine's working great. I don't need to do it. If you have a problem with your touchscreen, you can ch click on that. It'll walk you through a short procedure to calibrate your machine so that when you touch it, it works good. Right now, mine's working fine, so I'm not going to mess with that. The next one is user interface. I never mess with that. This controls um, how fast things happen when you push things. Mine's working great. You probably won't ever have to mess with that. I just click out of that. Now this next one is something that you will want to mess with called features. If they click on the arrow next to features, all these different things will show up under there. Time, plot, video, radar, all these different things. All this is a whole list of things that this machine can do. And inside the machine is a whole bunch of menus that are associated with each of these different things. But you're not going to have all these things on your boat. And so you're not going to want to see menus associated with all of these things if you don't have them. Because it's just going to be unnecessary to see them and it's just going to take up space on your screen that it's going to be meaningless to you. So the purpose of this is to allow you to uncheck the things that you don't have and that you're not going to want to see. So we're going to go down the list. So I don't care about this time plot thing. Uncheck that. I don't care about the video because I don't have video stuff on my boat, so I'm going to uncheck that. I don't have radar on my boat, so I'm going to uncheck that. Now there's a bug in the system on these units that when you check this, uncheck this radar and then go back to see if it's unchecked, it, it, it defaults it back to on, so you're going to probably have to turn the radar off twice if you don't want to see the radar. I'll show you that. But the, perp the point is, uncheck it. If you have structure scan, leave it checked. If you want the 3D sonar, if you have those features on your boat, you want to check that. I don't have the 3D, so I'm going to uncheck it, but I do have this other thing. Now, if you have sonar on your boat, you want to leave the echo checked. If you have a Lowrance machine, it's going to say sonar instead of echo, but it's the same thing. If you have the forward scan sonar thing going on, you want to make sure that stays checked. If you have serious weather, you want to make sure that's checked. If you have stereo C-zone stuff that's important to you, check that. I don't have that. If you want to see the instruments, there's a, a screen in here that'll show you RPMs and whatever you want to see that comes through your NEMA. You can display it right here on your screen. If you want that feature, you can leave that checked. You can go right down the list and do all the things that are important to you and not important to you. I don't have this. I don't want to see the sonar or the uh, Sonic Hub stuff, I'm gonna uncheck that. I don't care about the audio server being powered down. I don't have any stereo stuff on my boat. Um, it goes right down the thing. Now you have uh, an autopilot, okay? Uh, most of the folks that are running this thing do not care about autopilot. And if you don't have an autopilot, you wanna disable it. And when you, un when you check this to un turn it off, it's gonna ask you to restart the machine, probably do it automatically uncheck it it'll ask you do you want to disable it you hit yes and then it's going to restart it'll just take a minute to finish and that's the way you want to do it if you don't have the autopilot the autopilot is sort of a gimmick if you ask me it's not anything that uh, is particularly good for getting anywhere except you want to go from main channel a to main channel b i don't think that uh, most people would be interested in in it so i turn it off I'm going to go back in here again to the main settings and get back to the same place I just was uh, in the advanced and I was in the features. Okay, and you can see this is a classic example. I already turned the radar off, but the radar is now back on. So I'm going to, you have to turn, it seems like you got to turn the radar off twice. All right, so I turned it off and you'll see that all this other stuff is now off as well. You can, um, if you want, if you have, you can use this thing to control your trolling motor um, as well. Uh, there's FLIR stuff in here. You can pair it with your phone if you like. Um, if you don't want to do any of that, you can just uncheck it. So I've got it set the way I want it, and now I've unchecked everything that is important to me. I don't really care. Well, I don't know about the phone thing. I'll leave the phone thing on. But I don't want to have this go-free thing turned on. Uh, I, don't, I don't want it automatically uh, triggering stuff online with my Wi-Fi in this machine. So I'm going to turn that, that off. And then I'm going to be finished with this. And I'm going to X out of here. 
I only object to things that are important to me. That's it. Things I don't want to see, I have unchecked. X out of that. I go back to the main screen. And you'll see that now I only have the icons for the things that are important to me. The radar is now gone. And um, only the things that I have that I might want to look at are on here. Now, for instance, but the 3D sonar is showing. And I don't want to see the 3D sonar because I don't have 3D sonar. So I must have forgot about to turn that off. So I'm going to go back into it. I'm going to go back into the advanced. I'm going to go back into the features. And I'm going to see, see that. It says 3D sonar are shown. I want to uncheck it because I don't care to see that in my main menu. So I'm finished with that. I'm going to get back out of this again. I'm going to go back to the main screen. And now the 3D sonar is gone. That's all I care about. Okay, so that's that. Back into the main cog. We're finished with the advanced. If you click on this about, it'll tell you the statistics of your machine and the software version that you're running up here. If anybody ever asked you about that, it's in your main settings. You click on about and you'll see this screen. That's all you need to know uh, about that. You don't need to change anything on that. All right, so we're finished with the main system settings. The next thing for the setup is the chart okay click on chart in the chart you have these things that will pop up and uh, you'll notice the first one says 3d boat selection this is only applicable if you're looking at the machine and using the machine in the 3d mode if you're using ever using the 3d mode to run around where you can tilt the screen at different angles and things like that you can change the icon that your boat will appear like on the screen. If you don't use the 3D, it's always going to look like a little arrow. And that's the way I run away. I hardly ever use the 3D, so it's not important. But you can change the icon of how your boat appears on the screen here. And you can change it to any one of these things. So I just leave it to center console and I move on. If you want range rings, this will be concentric rings around your location on the screen. If you click it, it'll give you range rings around your location of different one mile, two miles, three miles, show you uh, distances around your boat. Some people like it. I don't particularly care for it, so I'm turning that off. The next one I do like, and that's called extension lines, and you should click on this. I, 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 I keep it set to like this. I check this word heading and I set the length to 10 miles. You click on length and you can set it to whatever miles that you want. I like mine to 10. And what this does is it shoots a, a, a line off the icon for the boat 10 miles in front of my boat in the direction that I'm traveling to help me get lined up to go where I'm headed. And I like it. When I turn the map on, you'll see that line and you'll see what I'm talking about. And if you're gonna be using this for navigation purposes, I find it to be pretty helpful for navigating, so I, I recommend that you do it like this. You don't have to, but it's just an option. So I've got it set the way I want for my heading and 10 miles. And I'm going to hit save, and I'm done with that. This next one is, I don't worry about the synchronized thing. Click the pop-up information box. Check that box. That will allow you to click on the screen and on different icons and have information pop up. If it's not checked, it may not work properly. Make sure that's checked. The next thing is grid lines. If you click grid lines, it makes a grid on top of your chart, just like that. This is the base chart in the unit that the unit comes with, but you'll see all these grid lines all over the place. Most people don't like to see that. Latitude and longitude, longitude lines. If you don't want to see the grid lines, Turn the grid lines off. Go back in here to the chart. I'm going to uncheck the grid lines because I do not want that. Now, waypoints, routes, and tracks. This has nothing to do with any mapping chips. This has everything to do with what this machine can do. This machine makes waypoints, routes, and tracks. You can drop as many waypoints as you want on top of any map that you're running. You can make your own way, uh, waypoints. You can make them whatever color you want. You can change them to whatever icon you want. does not matter what map you're running 
any map, it will work. If you make this to be checked like this and you make a waypoint, it will automatically show up on top of your screen. If you check the tracks and the routes and you make a route or a track, it will automatically show on top of your screen on top of any map that you run. If you uncheck this or this, it will still make these things, but it'll be hidden and it will not display on top of the map until you turn it back on. So, for instance, with waypoints, I keep it checked because when I make a waypoint, I want to immediately see it. But if I make a thousand waypoints in my machine for different spots and change them to different colors and what have you, and someone gets on my boat and I don't want them to see my waypoints, I could go back in here to this main screen and I could uncheck that and all of a sudden on top of the map I'm running, all of my waypoints will be hidden. They'll still be in there, but they just won't display on top of the map. And then the next day I get back on and I want to turn them back on, I just check it back on, look at the map and all the waypoints will be back there again. Same thing with the tracks and the routes. Now the routes are different than the tracks. If you don't know what the routes are, you can read about that, but you can set up a route and when you turn it on, it'll highlight a route for you to follow. You can customize it to however you want, something that you make. The tracks are your breadcrumbs. This shows you where you've been in your boat. Every day a new track will come on, make it a different color. You can change them to different colors if you want. You can delete them. You can choose to record them or you don't have to record them. But if you leave it checked, it will display on top of your map. If it's not checked, it will not display on top of the map, although it'll probably be recording it. You have to go into a different menu to get to the tracks to make them change the colors and, and dictate how it's going to actually look on your screen. All this does is determine if they're going to display on top of your map or not display on top of your map. So I'm going to check that because I usually like to see where I've been. Uh, but I don't ever use the routes, so I'm not going to leave that checked. That's the way I run with it, just like that. Now the next thing is the echo. I'm going to click on the echo, which means sonar. If you have a Lowrance machine, it's going to say sonar. You click on that. And then this is the way I have mine set up because I'm running a total scan transducer. And the total scan and the structure scan are set up with this con configuration. It runs off channel two. You use this multi-source selection. That's what's required for whatever reason. And it's set to channel two. Channel two means the plug on the back of the machine. There's different plugs in the back of the machine for the wires to hook up to for your sonar wire. If, if you have a structure scan or a total scan and it's not on channel 2, it's not going to work. It has to be on channel 2, which means only one of the plugs in the back is called channel 2. And then you have installation uh, here. And if you click on installation, it will um, confirm some of the things, so the source and all of that. And it allows you to change the transducer type here. And when you set this machine up for the, it'll automatically recognize the transducer. You won't have to go through this process. But if for some reason you needed to ever get in here to, to actually make it select a transducer, you can do it manually and find the one that you have and select on it. And then they had a total scan like that, then it would recognize that and you'd be good to go. All right. If you don't have this thing set up in the sonar cor exactly correct, with the right channel and the right transducer, it's not gonna work properly. And it's gotta be exactly correct. It can't be even just, just a little bit close. It has to be perfect or it will not work. All right, so that's that. All right, so back in the main settings again, that we've just done the sonar. You do the autopilot. If you're gonna do autopilot, you go in there. We changed ours, so we don't have autopilot. I don't care about any of that. This navigation is the next one. I click on navigation. This will allow you to change a few things. The only one that you need to worry about on this screen is called coordinate system right here. This is just an option, but this is where you could change the format for the way that you like to see your GPS coordinates. If you like degrees and minutes, you select that. If you want degrees, minutes, and seconds, you select that one. If you just want degrees, which is what I like, I click degrees and I'll have degrees for my coordinate system. If I make a thousand waypoints in here, all in degrees, and then all of a sudden I wanted to change it 
to that one. It will automatically change all my data. I won't have to worry about anything. I'll just automatically change the system to the new coordinate system for all my data. But I don't want that. I just want that. The reason I like that is because it's just one decimal point. I don't have to think about it. It's just 82.123456, 24.123456. It's easy for me to enter that in that format, and I like that, so I leave it alone. I don't worry about, you don't need to worry about anything else on this screen. The next thing is fuel. If you have little, uh, if you want to set your machine to track your fuel consumption, you need a piece of equipment that'll back, that'll, you need to get the right equipment for your boat in order for it to read it. There's a accessory that you need to get. Once you get it, you can come in here and you can set the thing up. If you've got it set up and it'll track your fuel consumption through your NEMA. I'm not going to go through that here, but that's where you do it. If you wanted to use that feature, this is your tracks and trips. If you click on this, um, it'll automatically set a new trip every time you go out. Um, if you click on tracks, it'll take you to this screen and it shows you your tracks that you've got on your screen. It allows you to change the color of them to any ones that you want and any day that you want. This is today's track, for instance. This is the routes that you made. And then this is a list of all your waypoints that you've made. If you name them things, it'll be the names of the things over here. Right now, I didn't name them, so it just automatically put them in number, chronological numbers like that. But you can change the names to any waypoint that you want. Uh, you just change it right up here, type in the name, and hit, and it'll be that name. You could do it on the fly if you enter the waypoint and push the right button over here. It'll automatically take you to that screen, and you can name it whatever you want. You don't need to worry about any of that. But you may not want it to automatically set up a new trip detection every day you go on the boat. If you don't like the automatic thing because it will give you that message, you can uncheck that. It won't do that. This next thing is alarms. You click on alarms and you'll get that screen. Click on the word settings and you'll get this screen. And you'll have all these different things. These are all the different types of features that the machine will alarm for. No GPS fix if your anchor uh, is, is, is sliding down the thing and is changing the, the, the location of the boat, it'll anchor for that, it'll alarm for that, all these different things. I don't want any kind of message or alarms going off. None of this stuff makes any difference to me. The only one that I care about is this one called voltage. If you click on voltage down there, you can alarm for um, for this stuff. And the only one I care about is low voltage. If my batteries get to 11 volts, I want to know I'm having an issue perhaps with my electronics and I want it to alarm for that. That's the only thing I care about. That's the only one I keep checked. And if the alarm goes off, it's going to give me a message on the screen with some kind of caution symbol. It's going to tell me you get a problem with the batteries. And I like, I like that. Now if I could also make it give me an obnoxious noise. And if you want to have the obnoxious noise as well as the men, uh, menu on the screen, you could click this thing and it'll beep at you and give you some kind of long, sorry, a loud siren through this machine to let you know that the siren's going off. I don't like that, so I uncheck that. And the last thing on the main settings is the units. Click on units down here and you can check your preferences for all of these different things. If you want to see miles, you can click miles. If you want nautical miles instead of miles, you can click that. If you want Fahrenheit, you can click Fahrenheit instead of Celsius or vice versa. And you can change the, the, uh, the depth from feet to meters or whatever you like to see. Gallons, all this stuff, just your preference. You set it the way you like it. Once you got it the way you like it, then X out of that. And then you're going to be finished with the uh, main uh, set settings that we just went through. So we went through this entire list of things and we're finished with that. And we can go back to the main screen and we are good to go. So at this point, we are now um, ready to, we've got the machine set up. And only at this point do you need to start thinking about putting the chip in. So you take your chip. Now that you've got the basics of the machine set up, 
you take your microchip, open the door, find the door where you put in your chip on your machine, and you're going to put the little microchip in the machine. It can only go in one way. I've got little uh, shiny things on one side, and so it only goes in one way. On this machine, which is an Evo 3, the shiny things go in first, and they go facing, facing down. They only fit in the slot one way and one way only. Do not force it. If you put it in backwards, it will break it. Never force it. You put it in there and then you push it all the way in until it clicks. And when it clicks in, it will automatically acknowledge the chip. And you'll see this little doohickey up here on the top left start going around, little uh, icon circle thing going around. Or on your Lance machine, it will probably have a message at the bottom of the screen that says loading the charts. It'll take about 20 seconds or so, and then you're going to get this message that pops up on the screen. In this particular case, it says SFL, which means that this particular chip is the South Florida chip. You click yes, and the chart is going to be booted up after you click the word chart. And then you're going to get a chart that looks like that. This is the FMT chart and it's just the map and yours is going to look like that okay it's not going to have any pictures turned on this is what you're going to see just a map with with no pictures and that's what it's going to be and you're going to have to go through and turn the pictures on and we're going to do that in a minute okay so you got the map up and now we want to uh, go to the next step so i'm following along on the instructions and I'm on number 23. It says the first time you boot it up, there's not going to be pictures on, and you're going to see what you're seeing here on the screen. So that's where we're at. So the next step is to go into the, the other menu on the top right-hand part of the screen. So you click this thing up here, and you're going to get a menu that looks like that. Now, depending on the version of the software that you're running, the organization of this is going to be a little bit different, or perhaps might be different. It might be some different things. You might have to go into, uh, it might look like that. It might look like that. Okay, so I'm several menus in. But when you, when you click on this, this is the latest version of the software. You're probably going to see that. And that's not what you're looking for. So you want to click on more options. We are looking for the title over here that's called chart options. And I do not see it here. This is the very first box that comes up when I click this thing is this one and I do not see chart options but that's what I'm looking for so I'm gonna go here till I see chart options and there it is that's where I'm going next But before I do that I want to talk about these things so that you understand what they are because I'm looking at it here in the house in the lab um, I have the orientation set to north up so it looks like north is up and south is south uh, if I'm on the boat running around out there, I don't want it to be on this setting, and you don't either. You want this to be set to uh, course up when you get it out there and you start running around. That's what you want, course up. But for the sake of looking at it on your boat parked on the trailer or what have you, or just sitting there at the dock and you're not moving, set it to orientation north up, other, and otherwise the screen will shake. You don't want that. Now you have this thing called look ahead. And I don't have that checked right now either. But if you click on look ahead, once you get moving, this boat icon will move down here to the bottom of the screen and two thirds of the screen will be ahead of you all the time. So if you were going this direction and you keep as your icon, as your boat is moving through, through, through two thirds of what's ahead of you on the map will show, continue to show ahead of you all at all times. If you don't have the look ahead checked, It'll keep your icon in the center of the screen and the map will just be moving. Uh, and half of it will be ahead of you and half of it will be below you as you move around. But I like the look ahead to be on. And the reason I don't have it on is when you're sitting at the dock looking at it like this, sometimes if the look ahead is turned on, the screen will shake. So that's the look ahead. Now, the next thing is the 3D. If you ever want to look at the map in 3D, 
you can check on 3D and it'll change to a 3D mode like that and you can mess with it and you might remember before in the setup we could change the icon of the boat and right now it looks like a center console. You could have changed it to a sailboat or whatever you want. I don't normally like to look at 3D mode like this but if you ever did that's where you check it and once it's on you can mess with the uh, the 3D over here and get the settings that you want to move around on the screen and what have you. So I don't like to run 3D so I'm turning that off. The next thing that's going to be important to you is the chart options and that's where we're going next. Chart options. If you don't see chart options on this particular menu, click around through some of the other ones till you get the one that says chart options. Click on that. And that's what you're looking for to find. You're looking for this photo overlay. In almost every unit, the chart options or the, the photo overlay stuff is in the chart options. It's possible that your photo overlay is not in the chart options. It might be in a, one, in a different title called presentation. Look for presentation if you don't see it in chart options. But this is what you're looking for in your menu. Photo overlay. And right now it's off. We want to turn it on. Turn it to full and after you turn it to full the pictures are going to come on and the pictures will then be on and this is what it's going to look like okay so the pictures are now turned on and we've got the full that was in chart options Photo overlay full. The next thing is the photo transparency and it says off. And you want it to be, you want to keep it off. If you click on it and you turn it up, you're not going to see anything except a map. It's a different transparency for the pictures over the map. This thing is designed to be used with the pictures on full all the time. That's what you want. So make sure that the photo overlay transparency is completely off and then you're done with that. The next thing is shaded relief. Look for shaded relief in your menu. Make sure it's checked. You want it to be checked. If it's not checked, some of the map features are not going to operate properly and the pictures are not going to appear as clear as they could be. When you zoom all the way in, they'll be a little bit degraded from what they would be without with the shaded relief on. So you want to always make sure shaded relief is checked. If you have a Lowrance machine, it's not going to have a checkbox. It's going to have a little corner here, and it's going to be orange if it's on, and if it's off, it's going to be white. And you want to make sure it's checked on, and the orange triangle is showing in your in your uh, in your box there. Okay. Then you have these other things. This is like a shortcut to turn off the depth contours with one button if you wanted. If you click that, the depth contours will go away. It's a shortcut, or you can turn it off in the, in the map layers if you want. Uh, just It's really not important either way. I never mess with any of this stuff, the shading or any of that. I don't know, you know what that does, but I never mess with any of that. Just leave that alone. This is The things that are important are turning the pictures on and turning your shaded relief. So photo overlay to full, transparency to off, shaded relief checked. Those are the most important things. Make sure it's just like that. And then you are good to go. This thing is all good to go. You can now zoom in over here and see stuff. And the first time you turn it on, all of the map layers are going to be turned on. Every single map layer is going to be turned on. Right now, everything on this chip is, is fully on. Pull and troll zones are on. Uh, you got depth contours going on, all the icons are on, all the lines are on, all the oil lease blocks, everything is t turned on right now. And you're not going to want to run with it like that. You're not going to want to see, see all this stuff going on. It's too busy. You could run with it this way, but it's just not necessary. And it'll look a lot better for you and a lot easier to read it if you turn some of the map layers off. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to go in and turn the map layers off. And once you set all this stuff that we just went through, 
and you adjust the map layers the way you like it, you won't ever have to mess with this again. So this is a one-time thing only. Um, and so uh, the only time you'll have to go back and redo all this stuff that we're going through is if you ever reset your unit back to factory defaults or if you reload new software and set it back to factory settings again with the reloading of the new software, you might have to go through all these procedures again. But once you've done this once or twice, you could do this in about five minutes, everything we're doing here. So the next thing is now that the thing is up and running and everything's good, what we want to do is turn off map layers. Um, so to clean it up so that we, we, we only are seeing the things that are important to us um, and not necessarily uh, looking at stuff all day that is going to clutter the map up and make it look too busy. So here's a classic example up in the 10,000 islands of a few things and uh, it's a little cluttered. So um, I got caution symbols down here on the tracks. I've got skull and crossbones for obstacles. I've got different colored tracks. I've got yellow hash marks all over the place, which are denoting manatee zones. And um, if I was in some other places, I might have a military base nearby. I've also got a managed area here. So all these creamy lines all over the place denote like the managed areas for the Everglades and things like that. And you don't want to see these big thick lines. Uh, you probably don't care about any of that. Down here in the in the Flamingo area, the pull and troll zones are on. All these red shaded areas are, 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 are on right now. Maybe you don't want to see that. So I'm going to go into the menu. We're going to turn off the map layers. And I'm going to set it uh, for... I'm going to set it for the typical user and how they would actually run around with this most of the time. So the way you do that is you click on this icon up here and you go into chart options and you're looking for this word called categories. So look through your menu until you find the word categories. That's what you're looking for. Click on categories. When you click on categories, you're going to see areas, lines, points, and tides. It's all you're going to see is it looks like that. And you'll see there's a check in each one of those. And right now everything is on. So the first thing is we're going to go to the areas first. And if you put your finger on the arrow next to the word area, it will expand like that. These are all the different types of areas that are on this chart and they're all checked on right now. State owned land in Louisiana. You got the managed areas which show you the outlines of the park borders. You got the manatee zones on. All these different things, named beaches, pole and troll zones, all this stuff. And you don't care about most of this most of the time. So if you wanted to see any of these things, you come in here and check it and you can check it. But most of the time, you don't want to see it. So the best way to do this is to click the very top one and they'll automatically all uncheck. So now they're all off. Every one of them is now off on the map and I'm only going to turn the ones on that I want to see. So the way most people would run with this is they would leave almost all of them off. And the only one I'm going to turn on that I recommend for most of the people is the land feature, the ocean water feature, and the oysters. These are the three. And this is a map and this is the map. That means if you turn the pictures off, you would see map. And that's really the only reason, that's really the only reason to have these on because they don't overlay the pictures, but the, um, the oysters do overlay the pictures. And the only reason to keep these on is if you ever turn the pictures off one day, you would actually see a map there behind it. Okay? Okay, so I've turned all that stuff off, and let's go take a look at the map. So, now I'm back, and the pole and troll zones are now off. And if I come over here to the 10,000 Islands where we were looking before, you see that there is no... Um, no manatee zones on anymore and you're good to go so the areas have now been properly fixed so the next thing is is to go into the um, menu again and go to the next section so I'm gonna go back to categories and I'm gonna fix the line okay these are all the lines on the map right now they're all checked on I put my finger on this and I expand it all out, and these are all the different types of lines. 
So I'm going to uncheck them all by hitting the top box. They all uncheck automatically. Now I can choose what kind of lines I want to see on the map. These are the ones I recommend. This one, bars, flats, and banks. These are yellow lines around the shallow areas all around the place. But really nice to have on. I don't particularly care about the, these other things. I'll turn this one on just for kicks because some people wanted to see what that was. The nine and three mile uh, state Florida boundary. I don't care about any of these other things right now. Um, the pull and troll boundary, um, this is not the ENP. The ENP one was up in the area. This one is a line that actually is in the Mosquito Lagoon. I'll leave that on. Uh, I'll probably need to change that to say uh, Mosquito Lagoon. This one is post lines and fences. I usually leave that on. And some, sometimes you're in areas where there's posts out in the water and things with fences attached to them. And um, that's a different line that you might see. There's not too many of those in the map, but there's some. Uh, some people leave the roads and the streets on. It's no big deal either way. I usually leave them on. This one is important. I like to see the rocks, jetties, and structure. It's a red line that goes around rocks that are out there, jetties that are out there, and different structure that's out there, like bridge abutments and things like that. And, and it's nice to have that turned on because it really makes the things pop off the map. And then the tracks. This is the tracks on the map, not the tracks that you create in your machine. That's totally separate. If you want to see the red lines on the map provided that you're booting up, you check this. If you don't want to see the red lines, you uncheck it. I'll leave it checked for the sake of this. The next thing is the points. And the points are basically the icons on the map. Go down here and look at all the different types of points. These are all the icons on the map. And most of the people leave them all on. I'm only going to turn off a few. And I'll walk you through that. So I leave them all on except for most of the time I do not run the product with the depth contour lines on because it's in the shallow areas and they're not particularly helpful um, in the super shallow areas where you're navigating around through these tight places. Um, and the depth contours are lines and then you have the number of the depth contour on the line like four feet, three feet, two feet, 15 feet. The way that the depth contour lines are on the product is you have the line and then you have the number on the line. And really what this is, is a point and it says depth contour lines. It really what it is, is the number on the line. And because I torn the depth contours off up here, I'm turning the number for the depth contour lines off here. If I did not turn it on, there would see no depth contour line, but you'd see the number that was supposed to be on the line on top of the map. And that's okay to leave it on, but because I turn the line off, I'm turning the number off too. And the reason is, is because I also have these depth soundings on, and this is the point depth uh, indications, three feet, two feet, 10 feet, 15 feet, 100 feet. These are the depth, con uh, depth soundings all over the place. These are just the numbers on the map and they're all in feet. I usually leave that on. The rest of these are self-explanatory and I usually leave them all turned on. Um, and you can, you can read you know, what they are. You have the labels and the names for the different map features and then um, PVC stakes and posts and all these things. Most people leave all this stuff turned on. The only other one I turn off is this one because I don't care about the oil blocks out in the Gulf. I don't care about to see those. Those are those check marks out there and the, and the, the number of the least, uh, least blocks out there. I usually uncheck that. All right, so I got the map layers all adjusted the way I like it. These are all the points now. The lines were fixed and we already did the areas. Now X out of this and I'm good to go. That is it. That is the way most people would run with it. Um, they have most of the features turned on, but most of the features that they don't want to see are turned off. You can see I got the oysters going on around here. I got the shallow areas with the yellow lines to help you navigate. The tracks are turned on. The obstacles are turned on. The caution symbols are turned on on those tracks to help you understand where you need to pay attention. All the red and green markers are on. Uh, and that's the typical thing. And you have the names of the places are all turned on. Uh, and that is the typical setup for most of the folks. 
um, when they're running around through South Florida. And that, that is the, the long and short of it. So um, that is the setup of the machine. I know it was a little bit longer uh, going through it slow like that. Once you're accustomed to doing this once or twice, you could probably do everything I did on this video and do it inside of five minutes uh, and be finished with it if you have to reset all this stuff. But for some of our folks who are not as tech savvy and unfamiliar with the machine, uh, we set it up like this so it would be very easy for anyone to follow. And I uh, hope that was helpful. Any questions, feel free to call in. Thank you.